Hello, this is Andrew from Ballard International. We just wanted to make a quick video today uh, demonstrating how to swap the CMOS battery on a KUKA KRC2 EDO5 system. Uh, the first thing you're going to see on your pendant that kind of denotes the CMOS battery being dead is a uh, checksum error on startup. So you'll be on your boot screen and see a checksum error. Um, so you're going to need a couple things to do this swap. A smaller screwdriver, a multimeter, a replacement battery, and uh, either a USB or PS2 keyboard of some type. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is turn the controller off. We're going to take our smaller screwdriver and remove the old CMOS battery. Just pops out. We're going to take our new CMOS battery, take it out of the package here. Take the multimeter, turn it on. Take our leads and test the new battery just to verify that it's fully charged. Which it is, should be 3.25 volts. Take sure, put the CMOS battery back in the slot and turn the system on. As the system's booting, we're gonna plug our keyboard in. Either a USB or a PS2 slot on the top of the controller. And as you can see on boot up, we're going to be at the same menu where it says CMOS checks on bad. Now we're going to select F1 to resume. The controller should boot normally. See Windows XP and then it'll eventually go to the Windows screen. So everything should be functioning now. What I'm going to do is turn the controller off. Give it a second to fully boot down. And then restart to verify our work. Now as you see, when the pendant boots up, you will not have a CMOS checksum error this time. It'll boot straight to Windows and eventually into the KUKA program. And that is how to effectively change the CMOS battery on a KUKA KRC2 EDO5 controller.